Brad, with all that you had going on this summer, how much time did you have? I feel like we're asking all these questions. How does Danny look? How does he look? How much time do you have to actually focus on the team in basketball? How much was it getting your life together? Well, it was a little bit of everything, uh, but obviously being able to prioritize and balance uh, is key enough in our life and our profession. So, um, obviously, the first thing is getting healthy, um, taking care of the family, making sure that my mental was right. Uh, and then, obviously, you know, going into the offseason and our moves and draft and everything like that, you start down on with the team and, and how we continue to improve. And then keeping up with Denny, keeping up with KP on our national team, et cetera, watching Johnny in summer league, uh, and eventually migrating to LA for mini camp, you know, so it's it's a gradual build up for sure. So I had some time for sure. Um, how has it been going from two to three summers? Man, take your time, people. Take your time. <laughs> you know, those with kids, you know, once you go from one to two, it's different. You know, it's go to man to man, but now two to three is straight zone. <laughs> so, you know, me and, me and Cam, we like, we're just, you know, one has to have an eye on two and, you know, we got to figure out what the other one is. And it's a work in progress, so. <laughs> That's great, though. Brad, you mentioned keeping up with Denny when he's overseas. What does that entail? Are you watching his film? Or are you just sending him pointers? What does that all include? Oh, just encouraging him. You know, obviously playing with his national team, you know, they always have huge expectations for them um, and for them to reach, you know, the pinnacle in which they're trying to reach as a, as a nation. And, uh, he was a big part of that. You know, it was unfortunate he got he got a little banged up, and got hurt. But our biggest thing, my biggest thing, was make sure he was healthy for us for the year, because uh, he's we're gonna need him. You know, he's so special. He was joking with me today. He's like, "You're lucky I don't have to guard you." So like, just having that mentality with him is to see him stepping up into that. Like that's that's fun to see. So uh, I'm excited to have him back. And and always, I'm always there to just push him and just help him be as best as he can possibly. Be. Is there always for you a sense of excitement on the first official practice day? Yes. I feel like today though I was a little bit more relaxed. I don't know why. Maybe I'm old now, huh? Ava, I am old, right? Uh, but for the most part it was it was it was real relaxed. Like I knew what we were coming in to do today. Uh, it's just a different vibe. You know, we had a lot of vets, a lot of guys who just knew what to do, knew what West wanted and it was a very energetic, high energy practice. Uh, so yeah, it was it was I would say it was a little bit different though, Josh. For it was I was a little bit more calm and like it was like a normal practice. It wasn't like a first day. So, yeah. how, cool, how cool is it to see Wes uh, have a, a full year under his belt and, and do this for? And this isn't the first time he's done this with this group. Yeah, uh, it's exciting, you know, for for him to get a fair opportunity. You know, um, having a whole off season to build his team how he wants or sees fit. And, uh, have some input on the guys that he would like and some changes that he would make and on and off the floor. I mean, including daily things we do in the facility, people that are around, uh, you know, making him feel comfortable, making him feel, uh, you know, strong as a voice in that, in that area. And he's just constantly continued that throughout the summer. You know, his biggest thing is developing relationships with everybody. He's really big on relationships uh, with players and staff. You know, so uh, I think that's imperative, especially as young guys and and many guys on the team, you know, you don't want to just have a relationship with me and KP. You know, you want to reach out to everybody, make sure everybody's engaged and, and feel like they're a part of something. Um, so I think I, res I definitely respect that part of him and that, and that vision for him uh, as a head coach. And he's just constantly getting better. He has to evolve. And uh, we're patient with him, just like he's patient with us and, and learning his system and what he wants. Tommy and Wes both kind of talked about how there are a lot of open spots, but it's going to be that way because they want the competition. They want guys to really, really push each other. Why do you feel like that's the emphasis going into this year? Well, I said it yes last night at a team dinner. I said our job is to make coach's job hard. I literally pointed at coach. I said our job is to make his job impossible. Like We are supposed to make it so tough on him. He doesn't know who to play. Like, and that's how competitive we need to be in here. And that's just going to carry over into, into the games. Uh, but, you know, he owns up to that. And like I said, I would hate to be the coach because it is a lot of talent in here. It's a lot of versatility, and versatility in here. And, uh, and the sky's the limit. You know, we can have so many different lineups, so many different looks, and uh, it's just a matter of us putting it together. But I think the competition level is there. Um, so it's going to be tough on the coaches for sure. Where was the team dinner? Team dinner. Brad, was there, <laughs> Brad, was there um, a different approach at all to the way coach uh, approached training camp this season versus last year, his first year? Uh, I feel like he's a little bit more, I won't say, it's weird to say comfortable, but he's like, you know, we know what to expect coming into today. Like he was way more vocal, looked more confident, looked more like 
like let's get after it today and uh, I think that's just that's just constant time and it's just like a player like as you get older as you get more experience with it you become more comfortable in that role and you know people know what to expect out of you and and uh, and what you want out of them so I think uh, his message is related today and his voice carries uh, throughout the team you know from everybody what point in the summer did any discomfort you had in your offhand uh, eliminate or vanish um probably when I when I got cleared to do strength exercises um so I would say June late June maybe late June early July that's when I was able to start doing stuff and it was it was a it was a tough task at first because it's getting over the hurdle of trusting yourself to do it you know to do the motions get the range back um knowing that you'll get back your strength and you know just being patient I think that's the that's the toughest part and, um, probably one of the biggest things I've learned through the process is just being patient and trusting your body, trusting your work, uh, trusting the rehab process and you know everything will work out for itself. But I think once after that, I think about a week, I was, I was pretty good. Yeah. Is it easier to get after that knowing it's not your dominant hand just like that? Oh, 100%, 100%. Um, because there were times I was thinking, I was like, shit, if this is my right hand, I don't know what I would do right now. Because I had days and I'm like, ah, this is really stiff, it's days, it's, it's like, all right, I question, like, am I going to get back to what I want to get to? Um, so I'm definitely blessed and fortunate to be where I am and thank my rehab team. But the right hand would be a little bit different, I think, I think for sure. And I'm, even now, even in camp, and I think the ramp up will be a little different too. Yeah. So, um, Re is jo um, start joining a, a training camp this year. So, yeah. what is he doing? And how do you guys feel? He's awesome. Rui is confident. I've said that all summer. Um, I think he's going to have a spectacular year. I think he's going to really. Be that be one of our guys. Uh, I really firmly believe that you know he's he's super talented, and I think the biggest thing that's noticeable is his confidence. You know, it doesn't matter who's guarding him or who he's guarding, he's going to get a stop, or he's going to get to a spot and, and get a shot off. Uh, so I, I love where his mentality is at. Um, he's in a great spirit. He's happy, um, and he knows we need him. So I think that's the biggest thing is his availability is his best ability. So uh, as long as we got him, we, we're good. No, you I'm sorry, how do you think this team what? The depth. Oh, the depth. Uh, it's good. That's what I said earlier. It's, it's a, it makes it tough on coach because we have so many guys at each position. Uh, we know they can provide service for our team. You know, they can really give us good minutes and uh, make an impact. You know, so it's, it's going to be tough on coach because it's it's – Point guards, two, three, four, five, everybody, everybody, there's depth everywhere. You know, we got plenty of bodies, you know, so granted, moving forward health wise, knock on wood, everybody stays healthy. Uh, that'll be beneficial for us. You know, we got bodies, we got guys who, you know, plug right in and go. So, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're good to be in the spot we're at, and we just got to keep pushing each other to get better. That's our job. Yesterday, you seem, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, a little bit cautious about. Okay, you know, I'm interested to see how it goes from here. It might look good on paper. Let's we'll see how it actually turns out. Is that just kind of going into year 11 and just knowing that, you know, yeah. anything could happen? It's, yeah, it's a, it's a maturity thing. Like, I'm just getting, like, I have a lot of time to reflect. And it's, and watching playoffs, watching the finals, watching guys compete, everybody wants to win a championship. And it, it is so hard to do that. It is so hard to win a playoff series. It's so hard to make the playoffs. It's hard to win games, right? And so... Just, just keeping that in mind and not like disrespecting the process, disrespecting uh, anything that goes into it. You know, it's 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 it takes a whole collective organization to win a, a championship. You know, so uh, I think just having a, a mentality of winning every day is is my approach. You know, practice games, off days, film days, recovery days, like everything is needed. So that's 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 my approach right now. Let's let's win the day. Don't worry about what happened yesterday, yesterday's game or loss or whatever. It's win today. Yeah. Did you did you see where uh, ESPN put you in their player rankings? And no, where they have me. Nineteen. It's pretty good. Hey man, hey <laughs> man, I never get mad at rankings because I've seen worse. <laughs> but no, it's good. It's a lot of talent, man. I can't be mad at it. It's tough to judge talent. No matter. It's a lot of times the guys are gonna be.
Brad, when you look at how KP complements your game specifically, are you most excited about what he's going to help you with on the offensive end or on the defensive end? Uh, both, because he's an underrated defender. Uh, even with me playing playing against him, he alters some of the decision making I, I have on offense because he's so long athletic. We don't really see that a lot, especially in our conference, right? So uh, to have him on our side is, is great and beneficial. Uh, but offensively, he spaces the floor. Uh, it's so crazy how versatile he is and his ability to, to shoot the long range three, trail threes, and get in the mid post and dominate, finish at the rim. It's unfair in so many ways. Uh, but I'm excited to see how it all meshes and gels together because you know, he's a special talent. Do you think that unicorn in your name fits? Yeah, he's a unicorn. Yeah, yeah, he's a unicorn. Right. Everything he does is, is not normal. His size isn't normal. His athleticism isn't normal. Unicorns aren't normal, so it fits well. Hey, Brad, with this being year 11, what's your biggest lesson that you learned about football with the WWE season? NBA season, sorry. I was say, damn, I feel like it's W now. It is. It is. It is. It is. Oh, uh, the big, I don't know, man. It's. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I always talk about embracing where you are, embracing the moment you're in. Uh, but I would say patience has been my biggest word for the past year, year and a half. It's been patience. Uh, control what you can control. Uh, you know, and whatever the results be, sometimes they may not be what you want. You got to be comfortable with whatever the chips fall sometimes. Uh, but patience, you know, patience and embracing the moment, living in the moment, uh, and understanding shit, every year it gets harder and harder and harder. So, yeah. I will, I will. Actually, this, uh, this morning, I had one of my good friends send me a picture. And he said, you can't go back to that no more. And that's true. That was a, it was a bad picture too, but but I don't know. The beer just feels feels too um, too natural now to, to shake it. I think so. It's going to stay for a while. It makes you a bit intimidating in a good way. Tell me something I don't know. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, no. It's, uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Maybe with the versatility from this roster, what makes you kind of the most excited about coming up? Um, I think good to get you behind the table again. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, playing with Brad, uh, somebody that's so talented and takes takes uh, so much attention away from everybody else. Also having cool, he's a playmaker. Who can, who can make create his own shot also. I think, yeah, just the uh, overall roster is, I think, built the right way. I'm here to help those guys and, and, and help Wes and, and everybody to uh, to bring this team to a new new level. Uh, so, yeah, first day, uh, it's a new day and I'm ready for, for a new season. How did that seem to the second training camp? Uh, I can't. I don't have anything to compare it to. You know, I wasn't here at the beginning of class. Yeah, but uh, he's great. You know, we had team dinner last night. Went over some things. How we want this whole thing to look like, uh, on and off the court. Uh, I don't want to go into too much detail, but I think those kind of things are important to to set from the beginning. And now it's on us and, and everybody in the organization to follow follow those guidelines, okay? so we can become a a, a winning franchise. How was day one generally, physically wise? Was it a lot of conditioning, a lot of running? Yeah, no, I think uh, it was. It wasn't super tough. It was, it was a good day of work, but uh, I think we'll ramp it up tomorrow probably. Uh, solid day. I went over some things offensively, defensively, and started playing a little bit already. So you know, you got the juices going for everybody. Everybody's excited, and, uh, and yeah, now getting some recovery, getting some rest, and, and back here tomorrow. In those scrimmages, is it already kind of broken up where you are playing with Brad and Kuz? Not yet. Today I was in team with Kuz. Brad was on the opposite team, but it was kind of random. You know, we, have, we still have a lot of uh, guys that are fighting for a roster spot and so on. So everybody has to get an opportunity to show themselves in practices. Um, but yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a solid day competing and going over some stuff. So looking forward to day two. Did your team win? 
Fuck this. Uh, yeah. I don't remember the score, but I think we, I, yeah, I, thought, I think we took care of business. Okay. Was there anything in particular that stuck out to you today, being like you said you weren't here at the beginning of training camp last year? I think, I think this is a, even though we do have some young guys, it's a pretty experienced team. Uh, I think there's a lot of communication, which is very important. And also, I, 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 I can see the difference from last year to this year, where you know, we're all open communicating. Even last night at dinner, we sat down, we went over some things as players, you know, as, as leaders, and, and, and how we want this thing to look, and, and how we need to steer this ship. So yeah, I think I think communication is going to be a huge part. Uh, just saying whatever you feel, and, and so we can so we can keep growing as a group. And, and yeah, and also defensively, it's extremely important to be louder than we were last year, for example. Working with Todd Gibson, obviously you guys have different playing styles, but what do you think that you can maybe learn from him that will help your game? I yeah, know he's extremely experienced, great leadership. Uh, I think great addition for us not only on the court but also in the locker room and just his presence and uh, keeping everybody accountable those are going to be some of the things that i'm going to be able to learn from him obviously you and denny you know played internationally i guess do you guys ever you know compare notes on you know how you guys approach european basketball versus the nba how we approach it yeah just you know he said uh, a little be more physical or different nuances NBA, that yeah, you guys definitely. Notes. i would say the number one thing is of course, practices are different and some of the schemes are a little bit different, but overall the main thing is the physicality. You know, guys here are just bigger, stronger, faster, better athletes. Uh, Europe is a bit more of a team, kind of like team-oriented. Every play is team-oriented. Anybody can kind of shoot and so on. But at the end, I think more or less basketball is moving in the same direction. And now even in Europe too also. A lot of the early shots, early transition shots are a bit more acceptable than they were maybe five years ago, you know, so it's kind of also changing and and, uh, and yeah, so but definitely, definitely the biggest difference I would say is the physicality here. Did you um, lobby Tommy to keep Sato at all in the <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, he probably did what he could, you know. I know he loved uh, Sato and, and us too. Me and Denny we were talking about it that we're going to miss him, and, uh, but, uh, but I'm glad that he. He decided to do that. You know, I think it's a bit more peaceful for him to know that you know, he's going to be there for a while, at least here in NBA. You never know anybody can get traded at any moment. You know, so he has a family already, and he kind of, I think that was the correct decision for him. You were telling, I mean, Ava and Josh about trimming down a little bit weight wise. I guess is that something that you and the Wizards had a plan before the summer going into, and then that's how you guys were able to execute it? Yeah, it kind of happened naturally. As I got traded here, I wasn't lifting as much weight. I was just kind of working on my balance. I mean, I, I was still lifting weight. I'm still, you know, it's not that I do it on purpose. It's more like I need a little bit less of that. I need more leg work. I need more, make sure my base is strong. And, and we started doing that. And I think end of the season, I started moving better also. I was moving the way I was, you know, a bit more similar to how I was moving in my New York days. Um, so yeah, you know, always after injuries, you try new things. Maybe you need to get stronger, this and that, try to avoid it. But but at the end, as a basketball player, I need to feel super comfortable and, and have a good rhythm and balance and all that. So I think we found the, the right way work that we need to do for me to stay healthy and stay stay comfortable on the court. And that's what we're doing. KP, when Brad was out here, he was talking about all the different ways you change the game on offense and defense. What, uh, what side of the floor are you most excited about impacting? Where do you think your impact will be felt most? Yeah, uh, obviously, I think you know, it's no secret that offensively I'm going to open things up for, for a lot of guys, just being able to shoot the ball from outside and, and my skill set. But uh, where I'm looking forward to making the, or getting back maybe to, um, to the level that I know I can play is, is defensively. And even to, today, too, I feel like you know, I'm always my. my own critic and I feel like I was a half step on some of the plays I was half a step late and I don't I don't want to do that I want to have my teammates back block everything that I can around the rim um, so then then it almost makes my my job easier the season starts you know we block first three games you get six blocks on average and that's hard but if you, if you get a lot of blocks you know it, 
teams will start to, or, or players will start to like second guess maybe or say like, okay, he's blocking everything, you know. So that's kind of my mindset going into the season, just showing up as, as mobile as I can, try to get everything that I can, and, and that way set the tone for the rest of the season. Is there anything in particular you're looking forward to with the Japan trip? Um, off the court, of course, enjoy their their food, their culture, and, and then it's going to be an interesting trip. I've never really done a preseason trip like this that far or that long, um, but yeah, it's going to be it's going to be fun. I think you know I played in Mexico City with Dallas. That was very fun. You know, it's a big game, always a big event. And now in Japan, I think also I've been getting a lot of I'm getting a lot of support on social media and stuff. So I think a lot of people are waiting for the game and. And excited about it, so it's uh, definitely gonna. Even though it's gonna be a preseason game, it's gonna be a fun atmosphere to play in. Is there anything you do for the long flight to kind of stay loose? You know what? I don't know if it happens to you also, to you guys, but um, when I'm on a plane, especially if you don't have Wi-Fi, that's when I'm the most productive. Like I go through my notes, I delete this, I do like everything. I get like organize my life. So if I'm not able to fall asleep, then I'll probably do that. A lot of coffee and just <laughs> increasing the competition level the other day. Do you feel like that happens naturally with a bunch of new guys coming in, especially guys like Monte and Bill who kind of had to fight for their spots before? To some degree, and I think that um, it's not only what you're doing, it's who's doing it. Uh, but I also think there are ways for us to incentivize competition, healthy competition. Um, you know, right. teams. Right. Uh, she said that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, teams that lose, they got to run. You know, you, you find ways to incentivize in practice, and it, it just kind of gives you uh, an added level. Uh, and guys embrace it. So I think it's important for these folks to continue in that trend and uh, you know make that a priority. But whatever we're doing, it's, it's got to be competitive. Um, Denny mentioned yesterday he's still kind of feeling a little bit the groin injury. How is that going to affect availability? Is he just doing extra treatment right now, or how is that? Well, you know, it's something we got to manage. Um, it's, it's been documented. You kind of played through it in your basket. Um, you know, the finishing that less than two weeks ago, two weeks ago is just something we want to monitor and not push him to the point where we have to shut him down. So we're going to ease him in and wrap him up. Uh, he's you know, available for parts of practice, but we don't want to throw him out there right now and do a lot of contact and live stuff. He was a part, is it correct? He was a partial participant today. Uh, yeah, more uh, in an observant role because most of what we did was competitive. So uh, he was, he's obviously working out now and has the ability to do extra stuff on the side. But we didn't want him to do anything live or competitive at this point. And it is his uh, a groin injury. The groin, yes. Yeah. Was anyone else uh, just an observer, or was everybody else involved? Um, outside of uh, uh, Quentin Jackson, uh, Jordan Goodwin. I think everybody else was good. For Denny, do you expect that he'll be able to take part in some of the scrimmages in these next three practices? Or? I hope so. We'll see. I mean, uh, there's, there's no real timetable. Um, we just want to ramp him up slowly and make sure you know he's good to go before we throw him out there. Is it just more so because the area and yeah. you know could be? He's, he's had a history of you know uh, of, of similar issues in the past. We just don't want to ag aggravate it. How different did today feel for you compared to last year? Um, felt a little different. Uh, you still get the jitters. If you want it to go, you want it to go perfectly, and it probably never does. But uh, I, I love the competitiveness. Uh, I, I think our guys are eager. I think we fast track uh, compared to where we were last year. These guys have been together. Um, they've had opportunities this summer to play together in you know, an open gym, and I think that's that's helpful. Puts us ahead of it a little bit, whereas last year everything was being taught from the beginning. We have a little bit of foundation, a little bit of corporate knowledge right now. So uh, I like where we are. We still have a lot of you know growing and, and uh, learning to do, but for the most part, we're, we're ahead of where we were for sure. In the scrimmaging that you guys did do, I guess, how did you guys come up with teams? Is it just completely random, or we try to mix groups, and obviously we want to see Brad. KP, Coos, and then those lineups together. But uh, I think first day with three teams, you want to try and keep them even as possible um, just for that competitive piece. Um, but, you know, we're going to play with lineups throughout, you know, these next four practices. And, you know, even when we get back from Japan, uh, and use those, those days wisely and, and try to see what, what, what fits best. Oh, uh, 
I have been a tier two that I really haven't met you in person, so it's very nice to meet you. I've been Thank following you. the Wizards for a couple of years since Bruce is here. I'm glad that you guys basically go to Japan. I'm excited for you guys, and um, we welcome you to you guys, Thank of you. course. And then we start in, in training camp this year from the beginning. Um, how's the team? How's everybody? Oh, good. No, he's been terrific. Um, you know, even in the open gym, he's been probably one of the most consistent, you know, guys I've seen. Um, he's put in a lot of time this summer. Uh, it seems like he's in a good place. But physically, physically, he looks great. And I think he's just continuing to build and, and add on what he what he showed toward the second half of last season. Uh, everyone knew, uh, you know, at the end of the season, at least, this guy's a three-point shooter. So just continuing that trend and getting him more comfortable playing on the perimeter, uh, I think will help him. Confidence levels have been increasing. Oh, dramatically. I mean, that's just with anything. You, the more you do it, you have success doing it. That's going to breed, to, you know, more and more confidence. Mm -hmm. So, also mentioned about the chemistry for the teams are very important. How's the team? The, the chemistry has been uh, been really good. Um, you know, I mentioned this, uh, you know, last week where you know, that that window of opportunity last summer felt real compressed. The season ended late. You know, by the time I got hired, and got the staff in summer league. We didn't have the uh, a lot of time really to spend spend with our players. You know, having a full off season, you know, of course, you prefer to be in the playoffs, but a full off season has given us the opportunity to get out, see players, get guys together. Um, they've done so on their own organically. So that level of chemistry, and, you know, it leads onto the floor. And uh, to, to have that time to have done it this summer is, I think, going to benefit us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. nice. Likewise, thank you talked about you know just not doing double work between what you're doing and what the assistant coaches are doing I guess just maybe what are some of the aspects where is it just you have to be able to let go of certain things or how are you trying to make that more efficient well to a certain extent I think after being with me for a year um, they, they know exactly what I want what I need um, so that part in itself is going to streamline our workflow um, and some of it too is just me stepping back uh, allowing guys to do their job. Uh, and, you know, I've been in that role before and trying to you know, take more of a holistic approach on and, and looking at the macro level. Uh, it's always a work in progress. It's not going to happen overnight. Uh, but just in our meeting time, streamlining the, the you know thought pattern of what we want to do, how we want to do it. Um, so when we do meet, it's, it's pretty precise and we can get right through it, get guys out. Yeah, you know, it's not something that, you know, you get to, get to see from guys that you've never coached. And that wasn't one, one of those things that uh, was really linked to Kyle prior to him getting here. And we saw a lot of it last year. Uh, some, of, some of it was out of necessity, you know, when we were down bodies and he had to step up. Obviously, he stepped up between the lines, but he's shown growth in that area. Being able to mentor, uh, to coach guys up, to be a positive you know, influence, and also, you know, uh, hold guys accountable. I think it's a great sign of maturity. It's a great sign that this group is is coalescing and pulling together. Um, and you know, that, that's required out of all guys. You know, and sometimes we assign that to, you know, your quote unquote best player. But I think it's important that all guys can show, uh, uh, can take a step forward in, in a leadership capacity. I think it's important.